Okay, so we're in Chapter 5 review today. We're reviewing concepts that are going to be on your Chapter 5 quiz tomorrow and your test next week. All right, so I just didn't think that it would be um, the best thing to quiz the day that you get back from Thanksgiving break. I didn't think that would go very well. Okay, so that's why we're quizzing tomorrow, and then we'll just have an extra day for review when, when we get back from break. All right, now, the Chapter 5 quiz and test is um is going to be probably more review than what you normally have on a test so we're going to put a little bit more of chapter four in there all right now to start though we're going to have some graphing where we need to graph the linear system so remember when we're graphing we're graphing each equation individually on the graph and we're looking for the point where the lines cross the point where the lines cross is my solution Okay, so hopefully this is more or less refresher for you. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these graphs on our uh, graph paper. All right, so on my first equation, did you plot the point at negative 4? Look up here, guys. Did you plot the point at negative 4? Yeah. Okay, now where did you go from there? Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Got your line. Now on your second line, where does your first point go? On a positive 4. Okay, and then so my point goes here up at the four, and then where do I go from there? Up, up three, three over five. five. Yes, follow my slope again, up three over five. Now, when I draw my lines through, and I've got to make it as straight as I possibly can, the point of intersection where the lines cross, that was a terrible arrow, but where the lines cross, the ordered pair where they cross is my solution. Negative five, Negative five one. So <laughs> All right, who got it? Who got it, guys? Okay, so that's graphing. That's your first question on your quiz tomorrow. So this might be the one that you go back later tonight and watch, <laughs> re-watch it on YouTube just to study and um, refresh. Second question, you have two of these on your quiz tomorrow. All right, I gave you the harder of the two, but we're solving using substitution. So hopefully, um, you know, remember guys, we reviewed this all day on Friday. We reviewed this all day on Friday. We did probably four or five of them. Uh, we need to solve this using substitution. Let's see who knows how to get this one started. All right. Um, okay, so what we need to do first is we need to have one of the variables solved for. It doesn't matter if it's x or y. Do we have that here? Do we have one of the variables solved for? Do we have that to start with? We don't to start, but however, there's one equation that would be pretty easy to solve for one of the variables. Which one is that? X plus 4Y. X plus 4Y. Okay, because X does not have a number connected to it, what can I do to 4Y to move it to the other side? Subtract 4Y. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. On substitution, I want the equations written side by side. All right, it's just easier to solve. And I need to subtract 4Y to the other side to solve for X. Now, it does not matter the order that I write the expression in. So if you wrote negative 4y plus 14, that's totally fine. Okay, now I need you to do the next step. All right, I have solved for x, so now what can I do with that information to keep solving the equations? So what can I do with 14 minus 4y? What can I do with that, guys? Plug it in for x on the other equation. Okay, and now I can solve for y. 3 times 14 minus 4y. Here's where I see a lot of people messing up. They're forgetting that there's a plus 4y that goes after that. All right, so I plugged in 14 minus 4y, 4x. But now I need to write the rest of the equation. Plus 4y equals 22. Now distribute combine like terms and solve for y. 3 times 14 is 42. 3 times negative 4y? Negative 12y. Plus 4y equals 22. All right, so what I, what do I need to do now before I can keep solving, Elizabeth? Yes, very good. Oh 
Okay. So now what can I do to both sides? Subtract 42. Negative 8y equals negative 20. Divide both sides by negative 8. Y equals 2.5. Okay, now what can I do with that? 2.5 to find X. I plug it back into one of the original equations, okay? So technically, I could plug it back in here. I could plug it back into the original one or this one. It doesn't matter as long as it's one of my original problems. Solve for X. So X equals 14 minus 4 times 2 and a half, which is 4, 4 and 2 and a half. Okay, and that's substitution. Okay, for our elimination problem, okay, uh, let's try to remember what we're looking for for elimination. Can anybody tell me what am I looking for with the elimination method? Can anybody tell me? Elizabeth? You want opposite um... variables? Okay, does it matter if it's X or Y? Oh, and I'm missing my Y here. Sorry about that. Does it matter if it's X or Y that cancels out? No, it actually does not matter. As long as one of the variables cancels out, I'm okay. All right, as long as one of them cancels out. So, um, what do you think? What do you think, Josh? That's what I would do. I could also multiply the top by another number. What did you say? Negative two. Negative two, or what could I multiply it by if I wanted my y's to cancel? One. Not one, but negative one, okay? So what I want you to see here is it doesn't matter. Now, I multiplied it by negative two, okay, to get my x's to cancel. Um, but you could have also multiplied it by negative 1 and made your y's cancel because that would have made positive 2y and your y's would have canceled. All right, so negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. But one of the main mistakes that I see here is you forget to distribute the negative 2 through the whole equation. Okay? Okay. So plus 4y equals negative, eight. equals negative 8. Okay, now I have 6x minus 2y equals negative 2. Now keep solving for y and then plug it back in and solve for x. Okay, 4 minus 2 is 2y equals, what's negative 8 minus 2? Negative 10. Divide both sides by 2, y is negative 5. Did y'all get that? Yes. Negative 5? Good, good, good. Now, I'm going to give you another minute to plug it back into one of the original equations and now solve for x. All right, so 6x minus 2 times negative 5 equals negative 2, and x ends up equaling negative 6. I'm sorry, 6 dividing by 6 to make negative 2 and you get negative 2, 5. Yes, so if you had plugged it back into the first one, negative 5, uh, back into the first equation, you should have still gotten the same answer um, of negative 2. Okay, either one should have been fine. All right, and that's your elimination. All right, so elimination. Okay, now I have special systems. Remember in this section, guys, I do not tell you which method to use. I don't tell you. You have to figure out what's the method that um, is going to get you to your answer um, in the easiest way. Okay, so you have, and guys, this is not a typo. Y equals 4X minus 1, and Y minus 4X equals 5. Okay, it's not a typo. Um, that's my system. So as you're writing it down, what method, don't say it out loud yet, what method do you think would be the ideal method to use? Don't say it yet. 
in my opinion, there is an obvious method that I want to use, okay? Why? I don't want graphing because I have to put it in slip intercept, then set up my graph. Okay, I don't give you a graph on this one to solve either on your, t on your quiz tomorrow. So graphing is not going to be my method of choice. It's just out, okay? So now I have substitution or elimination. Here's why I don't want elimination. Elimination, I have to move my terms around, then I have to multiply it to get one of my terms to be opposite. Okay, because all my terms have to line up. Okay, so substitution, I already have my variable solved for. So, guys, substitution, y is already solved for in the first one. So go ahead and plug it in and solve. All right, I cannot tell you that on your, t on your quiz tomorrow. Okay, but here's what I want you to look for. If all the terms are lined up and elimination, you know, basically I could eliminate one of the variables pretty easily, then yes, elimination. But if one of my variables is already solved for, then substitution is definitely the method of my choice. Okay, so um, when I substitute it in, I get 4x minus 1 minus 4x equals 5. Oh, it's just x. Okay, so 4x minus 1 goes in for y. Okay, now I write the rest of my equation, and is there anything that I can simplify over here on the left side of my equation? 4x minus 4x. Zero. Negative one does not equal five. No solution. Okay. Now, if what's left, if what's left equals out, then it's an infinite solution. <coughs> but any time, <coughs> guys, and this might be helpful to write on your notes. When my variables cancel, it's either infinite or no solution. It's it's one of the two. If my variables cancel, if what's left equals then it's an infinite solution. If it doesn't equal, like I saw here, with negative 1, negative 5, then it's no solution. All right, that's how I know. Okay, so the back of your quiz tomorrow, all right, you're going to see a lot more review on this quiz and test because chapters 4 and 5 really go together in so many ways. And... Um, it's really difficult to give you a quiz. Would you agree that these are pretty long problems to solve? Right? Okay, so that's another part of it is we have to be careful in the time that if I gave you 20 questions and you're solving only elimination, substitution, graphing, you probably would not finish that in 45 minutes. Okay, so here's your review section. All right, you have these four concepts on your quiz tomorrow. All right, here's the first one. I give you this equation, and I say, tell me what the slope is and the y-intercept. What is m and what is b? All right, so go ahead and write down this equation. You have to decide, am I ready to say m equals b equals, or is there something else I need to do first before I can say what it is? What do I need to do before I can say m equals b equals? Just tell me. Divide everything by negative 2. What did you get for m? Negative 3, not x, just negative 3. And b equals negative 6. Okay. All right, so those are my answers there. And now let's do write the equation in slope-intercept. So now really the only difference here is I don't really care about you saying m equals b equals. We just, again, have to get the whole equation into slope-intercept form, meaning, let's review again, what is slope-intercept? Y equals mx plus b. All right, so move your terms around um, so that it's in that order. To solve for y, so what's the first thing you do to solve for y? Not subtract 8x, but add 8x to the other side. Okay, so you move what's not connected to the y first, add 8x. Now, does order matter on this one? Does it matter if I write 16 first or 8x first? No. Yes, it does matter. All right, the x has to come first. Plus 16 
Now what do I do across the whole equation? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Y equals 4X plus 8. 4X plus 8. Okay? All right. Let's look at the next one. Write the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Before I give you any other hints, I want to see who remembers. It's been a couple weeks. All right, write it down on your paper. Okay, it's been a couple weeks. Go ahead and try to write your equation. Again, you're getting this equation in y equals mx plus b form. So in order to write this in an equation, I need to know the slope. Is there any way I can figure out the slope based on this information? Sarah? All right. What's my formula to find slope? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Yeah, there we go. 4 minus 6 over 0 minus, I'm sorry, negative 2 minus 0. X2 minus X1. Negative 2 over negative 2 is positive 1. Where does the 1 go down here in my formula? Where does the 1 go down here? In the, yes, the 1 goes for m in front of x. How do I know what the last number in my equation is going to be? Yes, very good. In my ordered pairs, one of them has 0 for x. The other number is my y-intercept plus 6. Okay, so again, this might be one of those concepts. We haven't looked at it in two weeks. You kind of forgot to start with, but now you remember. You need to study this. You need to review this. You have your Chapter 4 test. Use them to study. Okay, maybe rework those problems. All right, the last one is point slope form. So you have to know your formula in order to be able to put these in point slope. You can just put them in point slope and leave it. You don't have to keep solving it. Okay. Go ahead and write this information in the point slope formula. Go ahead and do that. All right, let's say it together. Y minus Y1 <coughs> equals M times X minus X1. So now it's just a matter of plugging in these values up here in for where they go into the formula. Go ahead and do that. You plug in negative 4 for y1, but what happens when you plug in negative 4 when there's already a subtraction? Turns into a plus. Equals, what's my m value? 3 times x minus, what's my x1? 2, and you're done. That's all you have to do. If I said slope-intercept form, you would have to keep going to get y by itself. Okay, but all you had to do and all you have to do on your quiz tomorrow is point slope. That's all you have to do. Any questions on that? The only other two questions you have on your test tomorrow, or I'm sorry, on your quiz tomorrow, are your word problems. So here's your first word problem. Um, it's from 5.2. It's on page... Um, Sorry, I've got to get back to it. It's going to be on page, I think it was 208, page 208. You already have written this down in your notes, example three. Okay. Um, you have one question on your quiz that's just like that one. Okay, where you need an equation for your categories and for your specific values. So you need to study that example back in your notes. Okay, that's your word problem. Uh, you have a second word problem. It will be extra credit, um, and it's very similar to that one. All right. Um, and if you understand that, that's everything you need to know for your uh, Chapter 5 uh, quiz um, tomorrow.